So we did the exercise. Now, we used this thing called assert equals. There are a couple of variations to assert equals, which are handy when you're comparing stuff. Uh, the first is assert equals that we just saw. It's taking expected and actual, and it's making sure that the expected and the actual are the same. Uh, there is an assert array equals, which is actually comparing arrays, right? You, you Let's say your method is returning an array, and you wanna compare if it's returning the right thing. So you give it the expected uh, array, which is you construct the array in your test class and you get the actual uh, array from the method that you want to test. And you pass it both to assert array equals. What assert array equals does is it kind of checks each element in that array, loops through it and makes sure that the same elements are there at the same place. So it's going to compare everything together. And right there you have another value in using um, JNet asserts. Uh, you also have assert iterable equals, which is kind of the same concept, but for iterables. So these are the three uh, assert methods that are available to us to compare stuff. Assert equals just compares values. Assert array equals compares values inside arrays. And assert iterable equals compares values that an iterable spits out. Now here's this, um, the assert methods uh, are, there are a bunch of different methods that we can use. Uh, let me actually show you guys this. There are actually a whole lot of methods we can use. And this is the uh, the Java docs for asserts. And uh, look at the number of methods here. You see this? Look at this huge number of methods. You have asserts, assert all, or assert are equals. Um, so assert equals is just one type of thing, right? One type of uh, asserting. You also have some other fun stuff, which is gonna save you some time, which is uh, assert false. Assert false checks if the condition that you're supplying is true or false. If it's false, then yes, it says, okay, you're good, your test passes. If it's true, then your test will fail. Similarly, you have an assert true. You don't technically need this. You could do an assert equals your condition and then true or your condition and then false. That will work too. It's just a convenient method so that you can, if you know that you're looking for a true or a false condition, you can just use assert false. Uh, you have a bunch more stuff. You have assert not equals. If you have two things that you uh, wanna make sure are not equal, you can use assert not equals as well. Uh, so you have a bunch of those things. Again, not anything you can um, not do with the assert equals, but there is convenience. So there is assert null somewhere here. Um, oh man, there's a lot of stuff. Okay, so assert null, which makes sure that the thing that you're verifying is null. Similarly, you can do the same thing with assert equals your thing and then null, but hey, it's just a convenience things. You have a search true and all that stuff. Um, so, and you have fail here, which basically just fails the test no matter what. But this is what the Eclipse ID put the test with to start off with, right? So you had fail. So whenever you have fail in your test, your test is going to fail no matter what happens. So you wanna add that when you haven't implemented a test and you say, okay, I want this to fail every time. So that, that would work. Okay, um, so this is assertions. Assertions have a convenience, uh, these are all convenience methods for assertions. There is also a signature where you can pass in a string as an argument uh, to, as a third argument to assertions. So you can pass in a string here saying, the add method should add to numbers. So what this is gonna do is, now if you look at the JUnit report here, it says this thing failed and then it says assertion failure expected one, but was two. It's okay if you're looking at a small code base, but if you have like a huge code base, it's hard to tell what the failure is, what the reason for the failure is. And when something fails, this provides a nice handy way of telling the developer who's gonna be looking at that at that point of time saying, hey, this is actually what failed. So when you add this third argument and say this is the message and the test fails, I'm gonna save this and uh, run this again. Notice that the message is a little bit more readable, right? It says 
the add method should add two numbers, expected one, but first two, right? It has, it provides a clue, right? So when you, as a, a test developer, you're writing a test and you want to tell a clue, you want to give a clue to the future developers who are going to be working on this thing, make their life easier. This is what you use. And there are a lot of companies where this kind of uh, a requirement in the coding guidelines. You say when you're asserting something, always put in a message. And I see the reason for that because it makes life simpler for whoever is passing through the test failures. Because if you're passing through test failures, your life is hard enough already, right? Make their life a little bit easier. Okay, next. Let's move on to some more fun stuff. 